15 years and counting, and I wanna share with you a rule that I really do believe has allowed me to survive for this long as a day trader, which is the rule of three. Maybe you've heard it before, but I put my own little twist on it, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way to go about it, and I'm not even saying that you should use the right or you should use this rule of three, but at the, the core and the essence of what I'm trying to get across is we need to be able to keep perspective as day traders. Day traders, as I'm sure you're well aware of, especially if you've had real money in the markets, is a very mentally challenging game. It's a game of emotions, and it's a situation where you can get out of control very, very easily, very, very quickly, if you're not aware, if you don't have parameters in place to kind of set off some alarm bells. And that's what this rule is for me. It's an alarm bell to say, hey, Clay, something's, something's off here. Something's not... Something's just not quite right. Now, it's, the rule's not gonna tell you why it's not quite right, but who really cares about the why? You just need to know that things are not right. <laughs> the, only that makes sense. So, and this is something where I know people use it in different ways, uh, but I just wanna share with you how I use it and how it, it's really helped me out. And it's not a rule that's gonna prevent you from losing money, but it is definitely a risk control rule and it's all geared around the philosophy of, hey, you know what? Winning's fantastic. We all love to make money. Yes, we love to see our accounts grow. But at the end of the day, what matters most is what's what's going on when you're wrong? What's going on from the risk control element? How's your downside looking? Are you keeping your downside under control? But the other bit of good news here is that it's super easy, right? So it's not like it's, you don't have to get out a calculator. You don't have to start doing like integrals and derivatives or differential equations. You don't have to do any of that, okay? It's just, hey, you know what? Can I count to three? And if you can count to three, you'll be good. Now on the screen here, you see some results here where this recently came into effect, and this doesn't happen to me often, uh, and I don't, <laughs> I don't say that in like a cocky way, like, oh, this does, but I mean, doesn't happen often, but it's something where it, it shouldn't happen to you often either. I mean, once you get to the point in your trading where you can, with confidence and with authority, be like, oh yeah, that is a most probably situation, meaning you can look at a situation and say, you know what, the, the thing that's probably gonna happen next is this. And while there are no guarantees, there are those situations that exist where you play the odds and you be like, yeah, you know what? Because of all these dynamics that are occurring, and for me, I use technical charts, but maybe for you, you use cash flow statements and, and, and balance sheets and all that sort of stuff. I mean, whatever, whatever floats your boat, but there does reach the point where you should be able to look at situations and be like, yeah, you know what? That, that's most probably gonna happen and it happens and, and that's how consistency is established and, and built upon. So once you reach that point though, because there are no guarantees in the market, you need still to have guardrails, if you will, on your strategy to make sure that you don't spin too far out of control. Because I mean, you're all always gonna be out of control a little bit, right? Because that's what a losing trade is. I lost control, I lost money. But that doesn't mean that you should just totally stop trading. But here is an example that recently happened to me. And I, and on that note again, I'm not saying that to be cocky, but if you have, and I'm just gonna say, you adopt this rule of three the way I use it, and you're like, man, I, I just use the rule of three like half of the month. Something's not right with your trading, with your strategy, with your, your vision of the market. Something is just not right. If you are find yourself having this rule come into play way more often than it does because in all actuality it exists because it shouldn't come into play that much, but when it does, like I said, the cause that brings it into play is what you wanna be aware of as a trader. So like I said, this is the alarm bell and, but you don't always want alarm bells going off within your strategy, right? If you have alarm bells constantly going off, that would be a problem and a suggestion that you probably need to rework your strategy quite a bit because you shouldn't always be bumping into the guardrails, right? You, you shouldn't always be hearing those alarms go off. But, but because the markets are not guaranteed, you still do wanna have guardrails. You still do wanna have alarm bells set within your strategy. So yes, I did recently have the alarm bell go off and I thought, you know, I haven't talked about this in a video or if I have, it's, it's been a long time, so, so I wanted to bring it up. So these are the results from when it happened, and <laughs> the rule of three, kind of a little ironic, it has nothing to do with three trades. So yes, I did make three trades here on the day, but it has nothing to do with that. But the way the rule works is this, and I wanna just walk you through the day. So Snapchat, winning trade, whatever, uh, and then we had TDC. TDC, first trade I made on it was down like 415 bucks, we'll call it. But that's loss number one, okay? The next trade made brought me down to only being down $166, but then with commissions, ultimately went down to, for those not familiar with their screen, 
$177. So the second trade was a winner. Now I bring this distinction up because a lot of people with the rule of three is, hey, if I have three losing trades in a row, I need to be done. And you know what? Maybe for those people that works best, but I, I me personally, I just disagree with that. It's it's not quite good enough for me. I, I it, it, Like I said, it could work. And for the people, if it does work for them, hey, that, that's what matters at the end of the day. But it doesn't have anything to do with me of, hey, it's gotta be, you can keep trading as long as you don't lose three times in a row. Now for me, it's a little bit different than that. So that was TDC, but TDC did produce that first loss. And then Tesla came around and Tesla, it just didn't treat me very well. I got a winning trade in it. However, I also had two losing trades. So point here being this, think about it. I've had winning trades, I've had losing trades. They kind of just been sprinkled in and off, but those those all overall, and you can see here the trade counts showing multiple trades, whereas you know Snapchat, just one trade there. But with Tesla, those multiple trades, ultimately led to being down 200 and we'll call it $80. So what I'm trying to get across is wins and losses sprinkled within the, the context of a day. But that brings, well, okay, well, that that's that implies, Clay, that there's quite a bit of randomness going on. If you have wins and losses sprinkled all over the place, there, there's randomness occurring, which is absolutely right. But it's also, okay, but but how much randomness is too random, right? That's the question is, we don't want randomness in our trading, but you can't always be right. But you don't also, you don't want randomness. And for me, this is where the rule of three comes into play because if I have three losing trades within a day, and even if there's winning trades, there, there's just too much randomness going on for me. And what would be the what what would be the cause of too much randomness? Well, the cause would be, something's just not right. I'm not seeing the market right that way. Maybe the market just doesn't really like my strategy that day, but there's something off. Again, like I said at the beginning, it's not necessarily gonna tell you why there's randomness. It's not gonna tell you, well, you have randomness because of this, that, and the other, but it's gonna tell me, you know, something's not right. Why? You have, you know, a bunch of, you have wins, that's great, but now all of a sudden you have, you've had three losing trades? What, something, something's not right. So again, randomness is not good. We wanna have some sort of form of consistency. Now, how much randomness is, is too much for you? I don't know. For you, maybe it's the rule of two. Maybe you're like, I don't know, for me, why do I have two losing trades? Things are a little getting too random. I don't know, maybe you have the rule of five. Maybe you take a bunch of trades, I don't know. But at five, you're like, ah, I don't know. Why, why do I have five losing trades? So again, it's not necessarily the number that matters, but it's what this rule is alerting you to. And it's alerting you to the fact of, you know, there's, there's just randomness going on right now. And you don't want randomness in your trading. You want, you want to feel like you have an edge, right? You want to feel like you're looking, you're seeing, and you truly are identifying things that are most likely to happen. But for me, I, I, my confidence, and just from experience, I know that, yeah, something's not right if I'm all of a sudden at three losing trades. Now, of course, if my first three trades in a row are all losses, well, then I'm done because that's still three losing trades. And that would tell me that really there's not even any randomness. You're just bad on that day. But I, I can't really say many cases where I'll, I'll have just open up the day with three straight losing trades. But yeah, loss, loss, a win, win, maybe another win. But as soon as I hit that next loss, I don't know, I, for me, it just, I don't like that feeling of not feeling like I don't have an edge on the market. Because then at that point, it makes me feel like a gambler. And that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to gamble. I'm here to you know, use the market as an ATM machine, but I don't want the market to use me as its ATM machine, which is what's gonna happen if I start to feel like I'm losing my edge and the market has an edge over me, which is where this rule once again comes into play. So what that number is for you, I don't know, but I wanna get the, the essence of the rule here so that you can start to think about that as, okay, I, I need some alarm bells in my strategy too, and I would encourage you to at least consider being able to identify in your strategy when has it become random? And if it becomes random, that means you don't have an edge anymore. And if you don't have an edge anymore, assuming you don't wanna gamble, then you, you shouldn't be trading. And you just come back in the next day. Because again, maybe you're just not seeing the market. I don't know, maybe you had a bad night's of rest. Maybe you have some personal stuff going on. I don't know, maybe the market, like I said, just doesn't like your strategy on that day. But at least you know it doesn't like your strategy. At least you know that there's randomness so that you can just be done trading. But again, that also goes back to, if you're using this rule like all the time, 
then that just tells me you have randomness all the time, which tells me you probably don't have a real strategy. And that's okay, but hey, you know what? Let's look on the bright side. At least you've been able to identify it. You've I've been able to finally identify the fact that, yeah, your strategy is kind of lacking and you don't maybe necessarily, it's not as good as what you maybe thought it was if all of a sudden you're always you know having this rule go into play within the confines of your strategy. But like I said, we want to identify randomness. And as long as we can start to identify randomness, we can identify those times where we're, um, either don't have an edge at all, or maybe don't have the normal type of edge over the market that we our strategy is supposed to be giving us. And, and that, that's okay. It doesn't make you a bad trader, but in fact, I would argue it makes you, it's gonna, it's gonna help you survive, right? So that's why, I, you know, and I'm not gonna say this is the only reason, but as traders, if you do wanna survive in the market, you need to make sure you have an edge, but you're not gonna have it every day, which therefore, well, well how can I identify? How can I know when I might not have the edge? Well, I don't know, is there randomness going on on that day? And for me, that's how the rule of three comes into play. So hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully this can kind of make some light bulbs go off for you and maybe fine tune your strategy if it needs to be, or just like I said, simply serve as a guardrail and some alarm bells to, to alert to you to when maybe uh, you, you just don't quite have it that day and you aren't quite feeling it for whatever reason that may be. Before I go though and wrap this video up, a, a big request on my part, if you do like the videos like this and would like for me to continue to make these, please hit that like button and also leave a comment down below, even if it's just a thumbs up emoji, but hitting the like button, or I think I'm supposed to say for the YouTube algorithm, smashing the like button. So if you smash the like button and then also give me any sort of comment, even if it's just a, a thumbs up emoji or a sunshine emoji, those two things go a long way and communicate that you do enjoy these types of videos. And then also check out the channel as a whole. There's lots of live trade videos, a good variety, and hopefully you like what you see enough to hit that subscribe button. As though I'd love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. But yeah, get out there. Put some guardrails on your strategy, get some uh, get some alarm bells in place, and that way you'll be better prepared to, to realize when maybe you just aren't feeling it, you just don't have it for that particular day, which you know is gonna happen every now and then because nobody's perfect, the markets offer no guarantees, but just be aware of it and have ways to identify it. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.